right? 2.045. This is where my tails begin. So the right tail begins at positive 2.045, and the left tail begins at negative 2.045. Now, this is really important that you have the number line in your head, okay? A lot of people mess this up or have trouble with it, especially intro students, when they don't get the number line in their head. Remember, in between negative 2 and positive 2 would be 0. 0 is sort of in the middle of a T distribution. And then if you keep going negative, this will be like negative 4 way out here. Keep going positive, you're going to get positive 4 way out here. So have those numbers in your head. The tail begins at the critical value. And the percentage in the tail is determined by the significance level. In this case, there was two tails. Now, here's the big question. Does the test statistic, positive 2.571, fall in the tail? Remember what we said was the tail rule, right? If the test statistic falls in the tail, determined by the critical value, then, and, and the significance level, then the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. It's not just a little bit of a disagreement, it's a significant disagreement. Okay? So where is 2.571? Alright, where is that? Well, let's find out. Let's see. Here's 2.571. Where is that on the number line? Well, 2.571 would be bigger than 2.045, right? Wouldn't it be sort of in here? Here's where my test statistic is falling. There's my, my T test statistic. All right, my test statistic is falling in the tail. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that our sample data or sample statistics significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. So if this was a one population mean test, for example, it would tell me that the sample mean significantly disagrees with that population mean in the null hypothesis. Okay, so I think in the tail means the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. Remember, the sample data always disagrees with the null hypothesis. This is not talk, asking if the sample data uh, just disagrees. This is, it, does it significantly disagree? If the test statistic had fallen over here, then it's probably, it, it just disagrees a little bit, and it's not really a significant disagreement. It's probably just due to sampling variability. Okay? So what this is telling us when it falls in the tail that it's a significant disagreement. All right, let's look at another one. So now we got example two. We got a left-tailed test with a z-score. So this is probably some kind of proportion test or a percentage test. So we're looking at a z-score test statistic of negative 1.173 negative 1.173. We're doing a significance level of 0 0.01, or alpha equals 0 0.01, or 1%. Again, I can look those numbers up on, uh, look up the critical value on stat key under theoretical distributions normal, um, just like we did uh, in the last unit when we looked up critical values. By the way, you can look up critical values with charts. Uh, some stat classes still do that. I'm not a big chart guy. I, I really like to use technology. Um, I prefer to use StatKey to look up the critical values if I need one. A lot of computer programs, though, will just give this to you right at the start. So, yeah, once you get your printout for your hypothesis test, you'll see that this is given to you. So what I did was I, I went to the normal theoretical calculator in StatKey, and I just clicked left tail, and then I put in the percentage in the left tail as 0 .01. That's the significance level. And then the computer calculated how many, uh, what would be the critical value? What would, where would the tail start if you're dealing with a z-score test statistic? So this is sort of the number of standard errors that it needed to be. So the computer thinks that the test statistic has to be lower than negative 2.327 to be considered significant. Okay, so again, think of, remember the number line, right? Negative 2.3, negative 4 is out here. Zero's in the middle, here's 1. Okay, so Here's our test statistic, negative 1.173. Where does that fall compared to the tail? Well, negative 1.173, right, where does that fall? Where does that fall? Well, it's going to be kind of over here, right? My test statistic is around negative 1. So my test statistic... My test statistic 
is falling over here. It's not in the tail. It's not in the tail determined by the critical value. Okay? So not in the tail. This means that the sample data only disagrees with the null hypothesis a little bit. It does not significantly disagree. Okay? It's only a little bit of a disagreement. And it, probably that disagreement might just be due to sampling variability. Okay, so again, not in the tail tells me that the sample data does not significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. If this was a one-tailed, uh, well, sorry, one population proportion test, this would tell me that the sample proportion is actually pretty close to the population proportion in the null hypothesis. In fact, it's only 1.173 standard errors away. If you're dealing with a two-population proportion test, um, it would be dealing with that the sample proportion for group 1 is only 1.173 standard errors below group 2. Uh, but again, that's not very much. Again, the computer think it, thought it had to be at least negative 2.327 or lower to be considered significant. So this is not significant. My sample statistic does not significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. Or you can think of it as your sample data does not significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. Okay? So get another one. Here's example three. Now we had a right tail test with a chi-square test statistic. Now, now, even if you don't understand everything about the test statistic yet, you still can get the idea of what this tells you about the data. Chi-square, again, is a more advanced kind of test statistic. Um, in fact, it's not a normal. In fact, it's a non-normal distribution. We kind of talked a little bit about chi-square in our last unit, but basically, uh, if I was dealing with the degrees of freedom four, the chi-square distribution looks kind of very skewed right. But it is, it's kind of the same idea. They said that they're using a significance level of 10%, 0.10. So I'm, and it's a right tail test. So the right tail, the probability in the right tail is going to be 0.10. Again, I'll go to the uh, chi-square theoretical distribution calculator in stat key and I put in degrees of freedom 4 and right tail and then change the percentage to 0.10 and there's my critical value, right? That's where my tail starts. So chi-square is a lot different than T's or Z's. T's and Z-scores usually get significant around 2. Um, chi-squareds usually are quite a bit bigger before they get significant because they're square numbers added up. So this one tells me the critical value came out to be 7.779. Uh, again, I looked that up on StatKey. So think of it this way. Again, always draw yourself a picture like I did here. Draw yourself a picture. The, tail, the right tail, shade the right tail, put the per significance level percentage in the right tail, and then the tail starts at this 7.779. So think of this as a chi-square value that you can compare your test statistic to. Okay, so my test statistic came out to 11.328. So where is that? Again, in chi-squared, zero's over here, and three, and here's 7.7, .7, my critical value, and here's 12. Well, where's 11? 11.3. Well, it's kind of over here, right? It's pretty close over here. There's my, there's my test statistic. So my test statistic is definitely in the tail. Right, it's in the tail. This 11.3 is over here in the red, in the tail. It's not over here. If it was just over here, it would not be significant. It would just probably be due to sampling variability. Over here, again, very significant. So again, this is again telling me that the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis because it fell in the tail. Right? So I want to kind of get you this, this rule about tails. How do I read my tails? That's kind of the key idea when you're dealing with test statistics. All right? Uh, in our next video, where I'll talk a little, show you again how I calculated um, these critical values on StatKey um, and uh, talk a little bit about um, using technology. All right? So this has been uh, Intro to Hypothesis Testing, Test Statistics, uh, I'm Matt Show, and this is Intro Stats. I will see you next time.